capital lost the life of any town or city in the country. And Garo took that fighting force, the 29th National Guard, and built them into the men who were selected because they were the best trained to go in at Omaha Beach. Okay, I'm uh, Cadet Cameron Armstrong, and I'm the Regimental Executive Officer uh, for the class of 2014. Today the RATS are visiting the Bedford D-Day Memorial to listen to uh, veterans and volunteers talk about um, Operation Overlord and the events that occurred at D-Day. And it's really uh, an interesting event in the RAT line that the RATS get this chance to come out to uh, Bedford and talk, hear about the Bedford boys and the various things related to uh, the D-Day operations. And they get this chance to step outside of themselves and the RAT line and the stresses of their everyday life get an idea of uh, the big picture of what we're trying to do at VMI. They just get to listen to the stories of um, veterans and then the sons and daughters of veterans and their experiences and to see what really happens when you go through a, a harsh system and then uh, pick up the call to arms for your country when it's in need. Uh, the Bedford uh, D-Day Memorial is a great way to get into the rats' heads that the citizen-soldier ideal that we're trying to instill in them at VMI is, is a productive thing and is and a great thing for our nation. Coming up. Now that sculpture is inspired in the story of the second Ranger Battalion that was given the mission to scale a 100 foot vertical cliff that was located between Utah Beach and Omaha Beach. The Allies knew that on top of that cliff there was a major German artillery position, and it was a must-go target. So the Second Ranger Battalion drew that mission. They got special training. They got special equipment to scale that 100-foot vertical cliff and take out that artillery position. You've got those heavy packs and those rifles to keep out of the salt water. You've also got the wake from 5,000 ships. You're not going to swim out of much. With these large metal crisscross things you see directly behind me, some books will put as many as 6 million of these kind of obstacles all along the coast of northern France. And June 6, when the invasion takes place, who are we going to get to help out the Navy and get that job done here in Europe? Who are they going to get? What comes under the jurisdiction of the Navy during wartime? The Coast Guard does. But the aircraft behind you have displayed there, you'll notice, that's a grasshopper, artillery spotter. But you'll notice the stripes on that airplane. See this white stripe and dark stripe? They're called invasion stripes. Now we had 11,000 aircraft that morning, and all of them were painted up that way. That was the invasion stripes so that our troops and personnel could readily identify our aircraft. Ultimately, today is about showing the rats the values of self-sacrifice and personal courage. They get the chance to see the tangible examples of that in uh, of, of citizens of our country, and it'll give them the ideas that they need so they can emulate that in the future.